Hello everyone and welcome to a 2v2 on Hell in a Very Small Place. I'm playing with Chinese name, also known as Rara in the community, and we're playing against 2233 and the captain, Lazy Hao. And today I really wanted to talk about points efficiency. I'm taking a land shot mechanized deck that I had just built at the time, and there's a lot of M41A1, there's an automatic, there's a couple of Leo 2A1s, things like that. Just I mean, mid-range tanks, actually the heaviest that I can bring in this deck, and then a bunch of cheap infantry going up to Bravo, and we see Lazy Hounds on this side, it looks like I will be fighting mostly against the Captain here, which is always a little bit scary. I also do have an IHawk this way, and of course this is the non-radar version, the EOTS IHawk native to Denmark. Maybe not native, but anyway, it's their unit. And uh, meanwhile, my ally here does get the first engagement, and his Panzerville, of all things, is going to be disrupting 2233's reinforcing line, while the rest of his units kind of catch up here and begin to engage as well. So on my side, I'm hoping to just use cheap infantry through here, and what I mean by wanting to talk about points efficiency, every single engagement, well maybe not everyone, but most of the engagements in this game, particularly over on my side of the map, but also here with Rara, were just intended to be, yeah, I'm going to lose some things. But what I'm going to lose isn't going to be as much as what you're going to lose. And actually, look at this. Triple stack of 1A5 and O2s. Fair enough. I mean, 10 rounds a minute, 65% accuracy, 17 AP power. That is going to absolutely bump and grind through these BMP2s. So, in the meantime, my Tornado ECR was able to come in here and take out an HQ61A. I think roughly around this section of woods. And that was immediately called out for replacement by the Red 4 player. So... That was something where, I mean, that's about 60 points, right? I, it doesn't make up for what I spent on the seed plane, not right away, but if we can keep getting that value, then that will be certainly something worth writing home about. M41A1s, meanwhile, just sort of sitting up here and waiting for a good engagement, and I'm actually going to be potentially even pushing this one up over the top, just because I mean, there's so much stuff over here from Lazy How. I was thinking, I mean, maybe, maybe he doesn't really have much over there, and this is my first mistake. So Yeosjun Dai 90, these are 30 points each, so 60 points for the double squad, North Korean special forces, and my martyr ones are 15 points. So right away there, I lose about 15 points, so let's let's actually, let's keep this whole engagement in mind for that. I'm negative 15 right now, and then with the martyr one, the other one, I'm negative 30. Duck and Skrupa are 10 points apiece, which means if they get wrecked by the Yeosjun Dai, then I'll be down to about negative 50, which is very close to the cost of the Yeosjun Dai. So so far, these guys are disrupting my plans, because they're down to about half strength, but they've very nearly made their money back. And my intention here to sort of go around, cut them off, and, and, and push them out has not really been working all that well. In fact, right now, the cost efficiency is sort of on his side of the field, but Live Garden get the intercept. The Lukta MG3 is very, very good, and you can see, I mean, these guys were attack moved over, probably should have just been walking them to keep up with the Yostran die, because, I mean, they are very, very quick. They have wheels for feet, since they are, of course, special forces, and my Live Garden are not quite that quick, but they're down to two strength. If we can get one kill, I'm not entirely sure that we got it right there, but uh, actually we are intercepting some ZTZs and some other units here, and actually, yeah, we got one kill, 30 points, so we're only negative 20. And that's the problem with those elite special forces, is you don't need all that many uh, kills in order to mm, negate the value that they get on the board. In the meantime, ATGM's coming in, I'm retreating my Martyr 2s and the M4 1A1 back, and some Panzergrun 90 are leading the way here. Zanshi 85 are 15 points apiece, so that's not entirely cheap, and neither are the Panzergrun. I'm kind of doing a mirror image of the same thing that he's doing, but I had fire support online, the M4 1A1s, and I was able to retreat away from a bad engagement. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, uh, lots and lots of moat shoots. I mean, there's just so much of one place. Everything here is going to get panicked and stunned and killed by mortars and then long-range supports. Well, I don't know. I, I can see why you want to have so much stuff in there. I mean, there's a Moderna as well. It's just so much infantry in one place doesn't tend to be what you want to do in order to make sure that you are, are not easily countered. I think that's that's really the point of it. Yeah, they'll outgrind most infantry in the area just by sheer numbers. But that's not only that's not the only consideration you have to keep in mind. So all of my reinforcements are piling in M113Gs and lots of cheap infantry, and as well as Gepard A1, I wanted to have a little bit more AA than I did at the moment. That might be a little overzealous. I don't know, it, it seemed like it was a good thing to have the base defense here and the M41A1 just to spot. These guys are actually headed out here to get a little bit more uh, spotting as well. I mean, playing against a captain on this side, I was afraid of any sort of flanking maneuver, things like that. Seaplane up in the air, SU-7B. Not exactly the most effective seed plane, it only has one, but it's also only 75 points, and it can get a lucky kill every once in a while. So I overextend a bit, more Yusjun die. I was trying to chase and get the remains of the previous group, but I mean, the full health 
uh, guys there are just able to wreck my high match shoots, in, but it's only 10 points of losses. So really could be worse. And it's allowing me to sort of build up in other places as well. So Leopard 1A4 is repositioning to go up here, double 2A1, and I'm telling uh, my ally, Chinese name, yeah, I'm going to go and hit Foxtrot up top, because I think he's been reinforcing into Bravo. The second purchase of Yostron Dai 90 was sort of a big thing. And Panzergren are actually able to get Zanshi pretty well here. I mean, these guys also have Lukta MG3, MG3s. They're very, very nice. And I was a little worried about the PGZ-80s, but, I mean, they're not in a position to fire right now. So I was getting those kills and then retreating back in, trying to stay away from those reinforcing units. And then a couple of eyes on Lazy House units up top, and that's sort of my, my cue to say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going up here, we're going to take those out. We're going to get onto the high ground here as uh, 2233 is sort of pushed back by some Stormer, FSK, and 1A5 NO2s, and yeah, I lose group of Panzer Ground. But that was to the 25-point supporting vehicles, and that's not going to be for free, because the other Panzergren are in the forest, they're split off, so I don't think he actually even knew that I necessarily had a group in there, because all he saw was the one group die, and these vehicles are not going to enjoy Panzerfaust 3s to the face. So they're shooting my scout defender, that kind of sucks, but we do get some return fire here, and there's the Panzerfaust 3, first shot, and let's see, EGZ 80 is 25 points apiece, they make up the price of the Panzergren 90, second shot, there's the kill, 50 points off the single Panzergren, not to mention the infantry we got earlier on, and, I mean, I could have retreated these guys back, probably should have, to be honest, and I'm going to here in a second. I was just hoping to exploit that gap a little bit, and probably probably a bit overzealous of a move there. So, I'm trying to pound in a couple of artillery shells, and just cover my Panzer Grenz retreat with that. We'll see if it works. Uh, in the meantime, a couple other units of infantry are coming up, and that's going to be sort of the screen for my push into Fox. And, I mean... Sometimes that's all you need, <laughs> just a couple of bodies and enough guns, and we'll see what we can do with the top part of that zone. In the meantime, Speciality and Note Key, groups of three here, and this is the other half of that cost-effectiveness coin. Three Speciality and Note Key in a town where they're just going to take fire from long range, I mean, yeah, they'll hold up against a couple infantry pushing, but you never want these infantry taking fire from a distance. Even if it's only one point of chip damage at a time, it's just, it's such a brutally cost-ineffective thing to do. There's no reason not to have line infantry there, they can fend off even special forces in the open, to be frank, and when they take damage, it's not as much of a price to pay. So, PGZ-80s on this side as well, and I think I think this was a little bit one-dimensional, um, because he's clearly setting up a defense just along this line, and so long as I'm not trying to break into it stupidly, it's not really going to matter. So, I mean, that's 50 points there of moderate fire support. I mean, there's another one up top, so it's not like he was not screening out the flanks, but, I mean, look at this. Yes, Jundai. 60 points, this second group I was more prepared for, and he's running in and shooting at Livgarden, while my Martyr ones, my Deccan's group, and the Livgarden themselves are able to get a stun and very quickly a kill. I mean, they can't even really pull back out of this because that's going to be a second stun from Suppression, and 60 points worth of kills right there, very quick, very easy. The worst thing that you want to see if you're the one sending those special forces forward. So, ZTZ 88As, these guys are the 70 point Chinese tanks, and that was something I was a bit more worried about, but I mean, they're still shooting in just a high mount shoots in. I'm trying to see if I can get some Live Garden forward, and unfortunately, there's another group of Yestrun Dai here, but there's only eight of them, and I was thinking maybe we have the bodies to do this if I can just get Cheap Dragoner up to take those shots, and still the Live Garden didn't really mean to lose that first group, and I should be pulling back. I should be reinforcing. My Mancot 1 is a little bit farther back beyond the lines than he really needs to be. And uh, here comes that push down the pipe. So Leopard 1A4s, Leopard 2A1, and Martyr 2s. The other Leopard 2A1 is just sitting here to make sure that there's no counter push into this section of woods. I still need a big gun online, so 1, 2 right there. We're going to have an unload. A bit grouped up here, yeah, but I was hoping that he wouldn't quite be able to see me, and we'd be able to. Apologies for the sirens there. <laughs> I promise they're not coming for me, per usual. Um, ZTZ 88As, by the way, being engaged by high mount shoots in. They have surprisingly high uh, accuracy blend aside secondaries, but let's take a look at this fire up top as well. So, my M113 A1Gs are taking fire for me. They're five point boxes. These guys are 40 point tanks. Leopard 184s come online, and let's see what we can do. Yep, two 40 point tank kills. The PGZ 80s, again, 25 points apiece, taken out relatively quickly, and the Martyr 2s just sort of wrapping up this whole zone. About 100-some points worth of kills and maybe 20 points tops worth of losses there, and we've secured the position. So the top part of Foxtrot is ours. I have an automatic that should be moving up relatively soon to make sure that we have some anti-air there as well. And then we were able to kill the two 70-point tanks, I think, right about here. Yep, there they are. 
Ooh, man, one and two right next to each other. So it's just, it's becoming a bit of what mech decks are supposed to do, is you're not going to keep everything alive, but you can at least get good kills for it. And this is sort of the follow-up of the special at Notki. LSTR should not be taking fire from NM-135s at range. It's just, it's not what they're designed to do. And the Gewehrmann here, very nice push in. I mean, NMs get one more entire unit kill. And then the long-range supporting fire and the Gewehrmann should be able to make this position sort of untenable for 22 or 33. Uh, in this game, as we only have about five or so minutes left because we are getting some good engagements here. BTR ADAs, we're pushing back. I have a Command Leopard trying to cap Bravo, and we're a little bit light. So Dragoner, High Met shoots in. I've lost a lot of my stuff here, even if it was at cost. And so uh, we're going to be bringing in a bunch more reinforcements. Four groups already on the way, two more on the way after that. I mean, the sheer amount of stuff. Oh, geez, that's a train. That's a new one. Goodness. I don't think I've ever really had a train this time before, but okay. Um, apologies for that, seriously. Okay, um, so my Leopard 1's being a little cautious, but then just the sheer amount of cheap, cost-effective stuff that mechanized decks can throw forward is insane. I used to always wonder, you know, why is it so difficult playing Moto against this? And you realize, okay, I mean, these are all five-point boxes. It's just, it's slow, yeah, but so long as you keep a constant stream going, they can really, I mean, they can get where they need to go when they need to go there. And it's just incredibly hard to outgrind, particularly in things like Forest. I love fighting in Bravo for that reason. Even with, I mean, even with motorized, honestly, if you take good enough infantry and you get higher veterancy on moto and mech decks in your infantry anyway, so it is nice to do. Um, it's just, it's a tar pit. And it's a tar pit that's going to be cost effective for whoever has the better infantry and the better supporting fire in those woods. Not necessarily expensive supporting fire either. We saw what happened to those 70 point tanks. And here it is, more Yastrandai. And I mean, three groups here, that's 90 points worth of special forces. And they're getting, I mean, some value off Martyr 1s, but even that was not entirely great. We were able to kill half of this group, which, I mean, that's roughly at cost anyway. 50 point Martyr 1, 30 point infantry. And then we're going to have the uh, Panzer Mortars firing in here as well. And I mean, most of that's just going to be shocking, stunning these guys. Let's take a look. So calm, worried, and I'm firing a little bit behind, that's not exactly the best, but Deccan's Grupa got online, Martyr 1's got online, look at how quickly those Yostran die are just getting melted by Deccan's Grupa, melted by the fire support here, trying to keep their own secondaries offline, so I mean, this is nice micro, the RPD is off, he's looking for vehicles, and you will get a couple of vehicle kills doing that sort of thing, but I mean, just down to 11, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, Brutal stuff, and then follow-up bombing run, a little bit unnecessary, but I was able to get another kill on the ECR, so about another 60 points there, just killing those mm, relatively cheap, but still 60-ish point Chinese radar anti-air uh, pieces. So, my ally, meanwhile, has taken the front part of golf. This is a hard thing to recover from, and, I mean, the push into Echo, SU-25Ks are gonna mulch that, but we get the SU-25K in response, so honestly... Pretty worthwhile. It does also spot the Moderna Force, which we might be able to follow up on, just depending on what tools are available in that section. And the PGZ 80s, I don't even understand why these guys were thrown forward at this point. I mean, kill number two for the high mount shoots and blend sign, 50% accuracy, 14 AP, but sometimes it's enough. And even militia can do very, very well in these knife fighting engagements against more expensive armor than should ever be here. Duck and Scrupa get the first shot, and let's see. Yeah, might get the second. Nope, high mass shoots in. Okay, third shot. Yeah, that was the Deccan's Grupa. But another 25 points worth of kills there. And 25 points worth of infantry, 50 points worth of kills total. It's just... This deck was probably the happiest I've been with Mechanized in a long time. Because it's very much not my playstyle. You guys know I have to go fast all the time, every single day. Um, it's how I prefer to play. But this... This was a brutal stuff. And it really just goes to show... Um, why mechanized decks have such a place in the meta right now. I mean, it's it's something that is just incredibly hard to counter over time. So, Starfighter coming in, and this was a bit of a um, what's going on moment, but this is not the Napalm Starfighter, that is a Cluster Starfighter dropping right on top of the Strops and the ZSU, and I think the Starfighter did die, but three kills there, including the Strop. Uh, maybe not worth it in terms of availability, but certainly in terms of raw kills. Starfighter as well going in, is he gonna... jeez. I was going to bomb the Salamandra for a second. Very nice kill on the Starfighter. I mean, these guys, 60 points each, the Salamanders are 80, and you can see this whole game has just been one attritious mosh pit uh, after another on either side of the map, too. I, I don't quite remember what uh, my ally was taking, but it certainly looks very mechanized to me. I think I think it was. I'm not entirely sure. I think it might have even been Denmark National mechanized. I'm not really sure. No, 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 no. Norway mech. Yep, Norway mech. 
LHV, and yeah, I mean, the Moderna's getting some kills here, but it got clustered to hell and back, down to about two strength, and that last Starfighter coming in should be able to seal the deal, and yep, there's the Moderna dead. I mean, just brutal, brutal stuff. And the CV9030Ns are even killing out scout tanks behind T-72s. Like, when? What? Why? It's just so rude, right? But, I mean, they have Bushmaster 2s. It's no slouch. And there's logistics trucks back there keeping them relatively close to full uh, munitions, which is oftentimes the problem that you have with most of the units with, um, with those Bushmaster 2s. It's just they run out of bullets, but... Yeah, I mean, good positioning, and he's just getting close. <laughs> That's looking for an armor pen, because the Bushmaster 2s are kinetic, and they can do that at close enough range. Let's see. Now, oh, distracted by some Lecha by the look of it, which and they promptly murder. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah, all of this just to get close enough to pen. Let's take a look. 5 strength, 3 strength, every single volley. Yep, there's a 40 point tank kill. In the meantime, we're pushing up and just able to get a firing concave as 2233 surrenders, and that's going to be shortly followed thereafter by the captain surrendering as well. And just the kills losses here over a 19 minute, including the deployments of 16 minute, 15 second of action game, 3460 to 1580. That's rough, man. That's really rough. 1345 for me, 480 losses, and then on the other side, 2115 for Chinese name, 1100 losses. So a bit more of intense fighting over on that side than it was on my side, just higher value stuff all the time. We saw that with some of the Modernas and Planes. So, Martyr 2's got very nice kills. WZ-551's are, I believe, 15 points apiece. La Pajota as well as some Oat 64 as Panzergren did very well. pgz 80s of course, 25 points apiece. And then, just most things got a kill on something. Dragoner killing Yostron Dai 90 is really rough. And, um, well, that's going to be the game that we have for you guys today. So, thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.